Hello, this is Ken at New Tech Inventors, and we're currently watching a nine-part print job running on the ANET ET4 printer. These nine parts are part of the helping hand, and we're doing a test print to see how well they do on the printer using the glass bed, and we'll be checking for adhesion and quality of print. So we'll speed through this and see how everything turns out. Well, as you can see, these parts are really adhering well to this glass plate. They aren't budging an inch. The adhesion, the glass plate is really strong while the bed's heated. So let's let it cool off for a few minutes or maybe about 30 minutes and see what happens. Now after cool down, let's uh, see if the parts are still really stuck hard to this uh, glass plate here. Look at that. That's how easy the parts come off of the glass plate after it's cooled. But if you noticed in the previous uh, previously that they didn't come off like that. They had excellent adhesion. That's why I recommend glass plate printing. Okay, let's see how easily we can remove these parts from the... Uh, there's one. Uh, let's take this one off. There's two. Three. Four, little piece there, Move that little bit there, five.
Move the inside portion. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. And as you can see, there's the uh, support plastic. Here are our finished parts. That one still has a little bit on it there, but nice mirror like finish there. Here we have. Excellent finish there. Looks like good quality threads. This part, nice smooth finish on that side. This part came out looking pretty good. This part has that nice high gloss finished there. Uh, notice uh, just a little bit of stringing in the threads on that one. This part looks pretty good. This part, again, pretty good. This part looks pretty good. This one, you know, has some real detail. Right there because of the interlocking mechanism. So, there we go. Okay, I think we've uh, showed the details in how we uh, came up with this print job. The reason for it was to test um, the ANET ETX4 in printing each of these parts on a glass bed uh, that's what we're going to be printing that's the printer that we're going to be printing on in the new print farm uh, we're going to have several of the ET4 uh, printers there with glass beds uh, the reason that I'm doing this video too is to show viewers out there that haven't uh, been printing on glass bed um, the advantages of it and the biggest advantage that I've seen so far is that you can get good adhesion you can print these tall uh, vulnerable parts uh, without a problem you can print a mixture of parts without a problem and the adhesion is very good you have a choice to use um, this uh, structure here, which is an option in Cura, where you can add some uh, supporting base to it. When you do it with this configuration, it interlocks all of them, as you saw in the video, where they all come off at the same time. And I also showed in the video, as soon as the print stopped, these parts were well adhered to that glass bed uh, you would have had trouble removing them I mean I tried and I think I showed in the video these things weren't coming off so that's the adhesion you get while they while the bed is heated once the heat comes off that bed and that bed cools these parts just practically come off themselves they just pop right off and if you used uh, this method of printing and printed this uh, 
more of a support base, that also helps in the adhesion. Uh, whether it needs it or not, I don't know. We'll do a little more testing and figure that out. Uh, I don't think I'm going to be using this. I think the adhesion for th these parts um, will be fine without this. And then it'll make it just a little easier. The parts will just fall off and um, I won't have to worry about going around and finding a little piece of this that I missed somewhere and peeling it off. Um, another thing that I think we're showing here is make sure everybody knows that Hey, you can load up that bed. You can print. This was a 26 hour print job and the printer ran continuously and flawlessly for uh, uh, 26 hours printing this configuration and you don't have to print all the same part. You can mix parts and that's very important in my business in the scheduling. As I've mentioned before, I want the print farm to be able to print jobs that run in 12, 24, 36, 48 hour increments so that I only have to go there like 8 o'clock in the morning, 8 o'clock at night, 8 o'clock in the morning, 8 o'clock at the night, uh, day after day, twice a day. And uh, to accomplish that, I'll set up uh, a job, let's say that I'm going to print um, several of this part and I can load up the printer with uh, three or four of those parts and if it comes to uh, if it ends up being a 20 hour or 22 hour print job then I may throw this part on there with them to make it an even 24 hours so that uh, it'll work in actuality, I wouldn't want exactly 24 hours. I would probably shoot more for 23 hours from the time that starts so that when I do go out there, the job will have had time to complete and cool down so the parts come off the board. But I'm sure that everyone can kind of figure out their own scheduling and how they're going to configure things. So... One thing I want to leave you with is that if you're going to be printing multiple parts, production parts for sale or for whatever reason, and you want to get a lot of parts off, you want to make sure that the printer is running uh, well and test it like this was a test print to see if there were any problems printing any of these parts uh, on that printer, on the glass bed, with the settings that I had. And just from first sight, I'll be checking these um, dimensionally and everything, making sure that they all uh, work and they interact with other parts like they're supposed to. And if everything checks out, then I'm confident I can print any of these parts on that printer with current settings in any quantity or configuration for any period of time, 12, 24, 48 hours, whatever, and uh, end up with a good part. So that's uh, my philosophy. That's the way I'm operating. And for any of you out there uh, getting started in this, um, remember I, <laughs> I did my first print just a little bit over a year ago. So I'm uh, considering myself as a newbie, but every day I learn something new. And as I do, I'll be uh, more than happy to pass it along. Hopefully it'll be useful to someone out there. Thank you for watching.